sing to God's glory our first enjoy to Him. Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Paul is praying for the Ephesians to have a full knowledge of sorry. Paul is praying for the Ephesians to have a full knowledge of God. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exercised in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Hear the word of God. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, and reading from verse 31. Glory, glory to Christ, Christ our, our Savior. Savior. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in the heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right, and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, and thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me. You are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat, was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and thirsty or stranger? or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you. And he will reply, tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. When something in the week that I thought was so funny, the joke is, there's a very fine line between a sermon and a hostage situation. <laughs> True. 
<laughs> I hope that you enjoy the sermon and don't feel it a hostile situation. But today's sermon, I thought, our readings, I thought, were quite magnificent. Our Old Testament reading, where God proclaiming to the world that He Himself will come to be our good shepherd. That He will gather in His faithful and He will bring them His protection. And our New Testament reading and gospel, the calling of God to call us like as if part of His flock to come and be with Him in eternal life. So then do I think we could have strung two or three readings together and with the psalm as well as strongly about the shepherd, my God wishing to care and foster for His people. This is what He did. Some farming communities and people are perhaps ignorant of what farming is all about often think that sheep are stupid animals. Perhaps they have a tendency to be a bit different. People condemn them for being a little bit different. You see, sheep have an incredibly instinctive desire and design by God to want to stay together. Seldom do sheep run away, except if they were threatened or in fear. But sheep are extremely social animals. They live together. And they stay. In some ways, though, they prefer to have leadership placed over and above them. They don't seem to have natural leaders that develop, like apex predators. Sheep just humbly serve people. And human beings have been using and eating and caring for sheep, or not caring for sheep, for more than 10,000 years. A part of what we as human beings do and interact with. This lovely sense of community that they have, they stand and wait and listen. And I'm sure that you have heard many, many sermons about the Good Shepherd, perhaps many sermons about the sheep. But I'd like to slightly modernize that preaching or teaching from the scriptures today as to the relationship that exists between a sheep farmer and, of course, the great use of sheep dogs these days within the world. There is a magnificent partnership that exists between a shepherd and a sheepdog. There is a faithfulness there that we see perhaps with very few other animals ever. One slight whistle, one slight command, one expression from the shepherd and the sheepdogs will do something different. A hundred percent commitment to the task, a hundred percent obedience to the shepherd who guides and leads the shepherd dogs to guide and lead and to nurture the sheep and to guide them to where they need to be for their own protection, for their own food and water source, and for their own care. That shepherd listens and his sheep watch him. The sheep get to know his words. Sheep don't really, are not animals with a great big vocabulary. They don't want to learn a whole bunch of words. They want to know a few things from us human beings. But they're quite content without the complexity of our huge language and abilities. They only want to learn a few things. They want to be guided. They want to be led. And sheepdogs, there to guide and lead those sheep and to guide them. You see, perhaps today our challenge as we reach the Sunday of Christ the King is what is our own relationship to that of God? Yes, perhaps we are the sheep of God who are called to go to be with God in His eternal kingdom and the great sheep hold in heaven of protection and love and care. But also while we are here on earth, whose voice do we listen to? Should we not strive at least to try and make our relationship with God as that of the sheep dog who listens to the master's voice, who listens to our good shepherd who guides us? Are we willing to listen to the voice of Jesus. Even in the time that we are here under the world, under COVID, and many different things happen, and many different situations are developed, and people are developing more and more against worship, and gatherings of people to worship. But we can worship our God in our own way, and we can still grow in our own relationship with God, in learning to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. How do we respond to our Lord? You see, the sheep don't know that they have another job to do than just being obedient to the shepherd. That is to care for the sheep. The very words that Jesus challenged Peter with, to care for the sheep, to care for the lambs. 
You see, our spiritual life is not just one of right thinking and right believing, but also in right actions. The Old Testament and the New Testament challenges us to what do we do for God's kingdom? Do we listen to the shepherd that guides us through the working of his Holy Spirit to action, to reach the needs of people? And we live in a very complex and difficult world. In the time of Jesus, few people were drug addicts. Few people were alcoholics. Few people had the huge addictions that we face within our world today. And sometimes just giving just keeps people in that situation rather than us trying to bring them the love of Jesus Christ. And sometimes the greater thing we can do is encourage people to come to know the Good Shepherd for only He is the one that has the power to help them to overcome the addictions. But now in what way is God still calling us to be faithful to Him, to build His kingdom and to serve Him even now during this time of COVID? Let us strive in our relationship with our God to become devoted to Jesus in our times of worship, prayer, Bible study and listening to the voice of Jesus that we can become like the sheep dogs who listen to the shepherd and respond to the call of God. God. Let us pray and ask God to give us the power of His Holy Spirit to direct us and guide us that we do the ministries and do for people what God wishes us to do for them. Not where we might think is what they need or would like or want. Let us go into this new Christian year from next Sunday with a new advent, waiting expectations to meet with Jesus and again be newness. Let us commit ourselves to our Lord and follow the course of the Good Shepherd who calls us to love Him, to love others, and to offer God's love to other people. May God truly bless you all this day as we celebrate Christ the King. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the midst of the challenges we are facing, we know in our hearts that you are with us. We today choose faith over doubt and choose to believe and not to entertain fear and dread. Thank you, Lord, that, your, that with your strength and enabling power in our lives, we can overcome every obstacle. We can trust you with confidence and can step forward in faith. We pray for a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation as we come to know you better each day. You made each one of us, Lord. We are your people. Sheep of your pasture. We praise you in everlasting thanksgiving for your love that endures forever. As we approach this Advent season, we celebrate that you are not hidden in some faraway cloud, but you choose to be with us in the blur and mystery of our lives. We pray, Lord, that you awaken in us a joy and a healing, a blessing and a hope. Let something wonderful begin in us today, something surprising and holy, something to focus on, to strengthen our wanderings through the muddle of our lives. May your hand, Lord Jesus, be upon us. Let your love fill us. Let your joy overwhelm us and let our longing for you be deep, be deep. Let our longing for you deepen as we contemplate the coming of you, the birth of your Son. May we be renewed in the knowledge of his constant presence with us now 